another episode of Being Happy Little Minis. I'm Dave, and joining me today is the wonderful, the ever uh, close to the camera, Jeff Jenkins, aka Rogue Hey everyone. Hi Jeff, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Not too bad, sorry for that little pause, I forgot that I was the one doing the intros tonight, so there we go. <laughs> it happens, it happens. <laughs> So yes, tonight um, we invited uh, Jeff along to join us um, because we knew that he uh, wouldn't, be ha wouldn't have anything on this St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's true. It's sad. No. <laughs> Don't be sad. It's okay. You do have something to call it. You have pink happy little... Bits. I forgot that it was um, St. Patty's so, Day. I'm not going to lie. Me too. I, I sent Jeff a message. Hey, how about next Thursday? And he goes, well, I'll have to see if we have St. Patrick's Day plans. And I was like... Oh, that's how old I am. <laughs> yeah, it kind of it kind of snuck up on me this year too, though. I, I'm not gonna lie. Nice. Yeah, it, it did. It, it was like it was Valentine's Day one week, St. Patrick's Day the next. So all good. Um, I'm just gonna mention to Leona that I can't see the chat. Oh. I'm assuming there are people in the chat. Somebody yeah, there are. Everybody. Let me get it for you. Any moment now. But yes, Jeff is uh, dialing in from his uh, bat, bat cave. My <laughs> painting cave. Yep. In uh, in central Maryland. An underscore my, location. Camp David. My secret. Camp David. <laughs> my secret fortress, fortress of solitude. Is that where yes. we're going? <laughs> sure. yeah. one, of the, one of these things. <laughs> I feel like it's become that. Well, the funny thing is, is that like I, I technically work from this space a lot, as well as right. paint here. I, I really haven't left this space, like this space, in quite a while today. Right, has <laughs> all the blood rush like to just settle to your legs. <laughs> yeah, your feet are now yeah. three sizes larger. Okay. Exactly. That's uh, that's often what I do in my my nest in my basement. Saying it like that, it sounds like a bit like an X Files episode. But, uh, I like it though. <laughs> it's all good. But anyway, while the owners um, unplugging the plugs and plugging them back in again, uh, tonight I'm going to be continuing to paint this um, wonderful Minotaur from uh, the Frameworks app from uh, WizKids. Indeed, Jeff, what will you be painting? I am painting up um, a bunch of the. Let me switch my camera here. Um, there, we go. there we go. There we go. Um, yeah, painting a bunch of the um, the rangers from the um, uh, the new uh, Games Workshop, the Eldritch Omens uh, box, or new ish, I guess. Um, I'm going to keep calling them Eldar because I'm old school and I can't pronounce the new name. So. Um, Eldar, I'm calling them Eldar Rangers, but okay. that's not that's what right. Games Workshop would call them. They call them Eldari Rangers. Oh, they just added an I. Is that how it's pronounced? It's just. It, it's it's kind of like there's, that. there's a there's a slight change to the to the. Um, <laughs> you about to look up how it was spelled. Yeah, so, I was. I was so, actually. Throw an, a, throw an A in front of the Eldar, an A, an I at the end, and it's Eldari. Yeah. It's, 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 it's fine. <laughs> so that would be nice. But uh, fantastic. And now, um, don't quite have the chat yet, but this is where we will ask. Chat, you where are what, you? What are you painting this evening? The frown on the owner's face does not, uh, does not bode well. <laughs> no. Anyway, while we're ready for the class, uh, I will look to my show notes just over here. So that you know that um, so apparently the uh, the first wave of the frameworks is that right with the monsters yes or the first monster wave at least uh, is set to be in your local store uh, later this month early to early April so a couple of weeks away uh, so if you're interested in checking them out make sure you uh, talk to your local store manager and say hey can you get some of these in um, Kind of the Minotaur is going to be $25, and next week we're printing up the Night Hag, is that right? Yes. Oh, uh, or whoever so is here next yeah, week. You and Gretchen will be painting up the Night, yes. Night Hag. 
So I think Gretchen is going to be uh, joining us again, dialing in remotely. Yep. And uh, I will be at Adepticon. Jeff Jenkins will be at Adepticon. As I, as will I, yes. Your sound isn't good at the moment. And, oh, there you we go. Right? I can see James. James has made a comment. Is that the first comment? Or that's just no, the first that's one the first one we see. Um, let me say I don't sound very good, as in my audio quality is poor, or <laughs> my voice is terrible. Oh. It could be both. No, I fixed it. Oh, so you had me on that mic over there. Yep. Rather than this one right here. Yep. It did sound a little uh, echoey, but I thought maybe it sounded fine for everybody else. So I did not say anything. That's my bad. It's just the way I throw my voice. So like they could hear you, but it just was really <laughs> low for a moment. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Cool. Okay. We're so hello, James. New. Hello, Josh. Hello, Jez. I uh, hope Adepticon is good. Adepticon will be wonderful. It so will. three years since the last Adepticon. So... Everybody who's going will be kind of jonesing for it, for sure. But uh, yeah, definitely exciting. Um, I bought a little um, fun device, a stabilizing gimbal thing. So I'm going to be able to roam the halls and get some uh, some footage of the show. So I can send that off to Leona to um, show everybody next Thursday night, which will be fun. Be definitely good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be nice to see a bunch of people that I haven't seen in forever. In three years. That's yeah. wild. Three years. three years. Three years, I know. It's crazy. As I said to some of the earlier, I was like, yeah, the last one was two years ago. And it's like, oh, no, it wasn't. So it should be, um, should be good. Uh, I'll be spending a lot of time in the hobby area, um, helping out uh, our friend Damon, with, um, with the smooth running of the, the hobby seminars, which will be quite cool. Um, I've got to decide if I'm going to pack anything for the uh, Golden Demons. You absolutely should. There's something yeah. in there. Not sure what, though. It would definitely be something from an army that I have painted. So that's the only way I roll. Oops. There we go. I need to be painting up. You've got so much to choose from. I mean, you've been painting <laughs> like I've nonstop painted quite a, since. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have painted quite a bit over the last two and a bit years, without a doubt. Are you going to be uh, taking these ranges? Do you think, Jeff? Are you going to get um, them They will. Then? They will not be done in time, <laughs> at my Ooh. pace. Um, I mean, I would love to. If I could get, like, three of them done in time, I'd throw them in squad. But yep. I don't know if that's going to be a, uh, I don't know, it's like, what, four days but or five days, I guess? Five days, yeah. Before well, start, I'm actually uh, getting in a little early. So. Okay. Nice. Well, you could just paint one of them, right? Enter it in single. Uh, I think I've got my single... A uh, oh. single mini piece selected. Um, I've just got to finish a little bit of freehand on him, okay. and then uh, he'll be he'll be good to go. So I painted him a little while ago, but since there hasn't been a golden demon in forever, yeah. I don't feel bad about. Right. <laughs> even though I technically even painted well. him last year. But. Okay. Well, it doesn't. There's nothing in the rules that say he has to be painted this year. Yeah, there's no like chronological requirement. I just, <laughs> you know, feels it. It just feels odd, like not crunching, right? Like right up to the deadline for a painting competition or something. It almost okay. feels like cheating to have something finished. And it's it's not cheating at all. I'll just let you know. You don't have to feel like Good. that. <laughs> Good no. um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And then if if I can't get these guys together, which is very, very likely. Um, then I will, uh, I might take something out of an army and put it in squad. And um, okay. I don't know, just kind of like raid my cabinet for stuff that hasn't been entered in Golden Demons before, which is a lot considering the last time I entered something in Golden Demon, I think it was Youngbloods. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that would have been a while ago. 
Yeah, it was a little while ago for me. Yeah. But the, the thing is, there hasn't been one in forever, though. And so the competition is going to be, I'm sure, like pure insanity. It will be pretty impressive. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's, it could just have stuff in the case. Uh, oh, Jess says cheers for getting some footage. Best of luck. And JT says, ah, much better. I'm guessing that means hearing my voice is much better. Yes? That's so kind of you. But uh, yeah, I think um, to 20, 2013 was the last time there was a Golden Demon competition yeah. in the US. It was a long time ago. I think I got a, a silver of that competition. With my, you had said uh, like Slayer Sword. I'm like, that's the worst humble brag of all time. I think I got, what was it? What was a it? Sword. Slayer Sword. <laughs> Some, a large piece of cutlery. <laughs> no, it was definitely not a Slayer Sword. I think it was a silver for my uh, con Lamenters Contempt of Dreadnought. Oh, yeah. I love that thing. So. Yeah, this time around, I'm, cool I'm not expecting you and me both. anything. <laughs> anything. I think I like told you and, and enter. Yep. Yeah, I told you and and the, the guys the other day. I was like, I, if I can just, it'd be really cool if I if I got like a pin for something like that would be awesome. Yeah, it's the height of my hopes. Your painting ambitions for 2022. Yeah, I gotta be realistic here. <laughs> That's cool. So I reach over here and grab. There we go. Nice. So for people who haven't gone, ever been to Adepticon, what are some of the things that you do, or like what makes it different from other shows? Um, I think Jeff. I'll let you go first. Then I'll throw in my. Um, geez, I don't know. I was hoping I'd have another second or two to think about that. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It is a well, kind I, of a big I, question. I but can like, start. You know, I was thinking. Yeah, you go. You go first, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think um, for for me, though, the biggest thing is at a lot of um, smaller, I guess, smaller shows is the right way to put it. Um, so, um, local shows regional shows there's um the focus uh there's well may not the focus but the if there are big events that are happening so for example like nova um nova open for example um 40k is still an incredibly huge part of the f ebb and flow of that convention okay um, yeah so when the 40k tournament is on Mo like a large chunk of the people are in the tournament and they're playing, so things are quite quiet in the rest of the area, rest of the show. But when they're not playing and they're out heading up to the bar or going to the vendor area, that kind of thing, there's a lot of activity. So you get that. There's a, there's a very tidal kind of feel to it, um, which you can get for a lot of smaller shows that have a big focal point. Uh, but for shows that don't, uh, Adepticon still has a big, has the team, 40k team tournament, the 40k championships, but that was weird. Sorry. Did anybody else hear that? No. Or was it just me? It was just you, sorry. Just me, okay. <laughs> I heard some of my <laughs> own words spoken back no, to you. We didn't see like anything. 30 seconds just, later. <laughs> you just stopped talking. I just <laughs> I was like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> glitched um but Sorry. that's okay no worries um, i'm glad it wasn't just my imagination uh but um for shows that don't have that big focal point uh so adepticon still has like hundreds of people I, there'll be like 400 500 people playing in the um 40k team tournament but because the show is it might, it might be like not, we're not sure how many people are going to be there this year. It might be 4,000, 5,000 people. Um, it's a different ebb and flow. So you don't notice that when those games are going on as much. Okay. 
because there's still a lot of other people doing a lot of other things. Um, no, that makes sense. So yeah, if you want to see the like a spectacle of a huge range of miniature war games being played, you can want, just wander around and do that. Cool. If you want to focus on a particular thing, you can do that as well. You could just spend all your time just playing Marvel Crisis Protocol right. and talking to people about Marvel Crisis Protocol <laughs> and looking at Marvel Crisis Protocol miniatures if you wanted to. But if you want to check everything out, you can do that too. So it's very, um, uh, there's so much going on and it's all all happening all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I think for some people That's it can cool. be a little bit overwhelming, particularly if they're involved in a lot of different games. Um, but if you're not involved in a lot of different games, you can keep it fairly, fairly tight and... Um, Get a, the, be f- sort of fully immersed in, in that particular game that you're interested in. I think, uh, I think for me, the, um, I guess the sort of activity around the hobby part of the community at Adepticon is um, that same level of constant activity that I think is you don't necessarily get at other cons. A lot of cons have hobby seminars, they have classes, um, and all of that stuff is great. Adepticon draws, not only do they draw a lot of international, uh, really high-end international painting talent for classes and that type of thing. Um, I mean, you can pretty much, if if you can name them as a, you know, very prolific miniature painter, they've probably taught or will be teaching at at Adepticon at some point. But uh, beyond just that, they're, they have this hobby area outside of the instructor's classrooms that is this, I, I can only describe as like this huge banquet table. I mean, it's just a bunch of, of tables stuck end to end um, yep. right out in this lobby area. And you can just hang out there and paint and hang out and talk to people or whatever about the hobby or whatever the case may be for the entire weekend. Um, yep. And some people do by the way, just hang out there for the entire weekend. So I think that component of it is really neat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that part of it's really, really cool. The, um, the, the funny thing as well is that it has a, uh, an unofficial name. Yes. Um, that most people who go to the show would recognize it as, is, uh, Fort Wapple. So, uh, James and Kathy Wapple are two, uh, great painters from, the Chicago area and for the longest time they've spent most of their show in that area um, Jim does a lot of uh, sort of teaching and is, is very very keen uh, very sort of keen and enthusiastic about talking about painting and about learning things about painting and that kind of thing and uh, Kathy does a lot of that as well but uh yeah, I think knowing that the Wapples are going to be there as well, if you wanted to sort of sit down and, and learn a bit more about like pre shading or um, sky earth non metallic metals or object source lighting or name the sort of approach that you want to want to learn the weekend, um, knowing if that you want, uh, be there. If you want to witness. If you want to witness firsthand how it is still possible to be an incredible miniature painter using a 50 cent craft store paintbrush, (laughs) you also can do that because Jim is notorious for being able to do that kind of thing and still being like incredible. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, having, having that sort of uh, location at the show was great for, uh, for miniature painters without a doubt. Yeah. I think it's really cool. I, and the, just the exposure you get with a show that big to so many people from different elements of the hobby. I mean, like you, you know, you're discovering games there, and you know things you did games you didn't even know you wanted to play, and you go to, you know, you add a new game to the list, or you add a new miniature line to the list, or whatever. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of folks, uh, a lot of smaller miniature companies there. Um, demoing their games 
um, running small events, uh, small tournaments, that kind of thing, um, showing off their latest releases. So it's definitely a great opportunity to see stuff outside, outside of what you might see at your local game store, which is cool. There'll be a lot of a lot of that sort of action this year, I think. That's super cool. Yep. But as you said, it seem it's since since it's such a huge show. Yeah. Yeah. They're able to do things that maybe it's harder to do at other shows just because there's scale. Yeah. And even though the the focus of the show is still the um, I guess the tournament events for the wide variety of uh, war games. Um, if you want to get a demo of, of a game, you, that that can happen. If you want to see, you want to play in a narrative game um, where it's not about who wins or loses, but what the story is, that can happen as well. Um, there is role playing going on. There's board games going on. There'll be card games going on as well. So loads of things going on. Um, the focus is very definitely on miniatures, but uh, yeah, yeah, you'll be able to explore I mean, all sorts of stuff there. To give you an idea, this year, and in fact, I think I did it the last time we had it too. But this year, um, for sure, my schedule is for the most part completely open. I have one class that I'm teaching on, I think, Wednesday night, something like that. I don't have a single event scheduled the, the okay. rest of the week. I'm just going to be hanging out, hanging out with friends, doing whatever kind of pop-up events look like fun, and painting and, and hanging out. And I will have a blast doing that. Um, so you don't have to go with like a full schedule necessarily if that's not your thing. Yep. So I'm just going to readjust where everything is. I found I was... Reaching across. Oh, okay. You just move the move the cameras on us, so I'm just finding the sweet spot now. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think. Um, oh, okay. I uh, see Josh there. Uh, it says, "Ahoy, Betsy Bowers and Company." I'm guessing I miss Betsy. Sorry. Uh, hi, Betsy. Hi, uh, Bowers family. Um, uh, but, uh, just sounds just like the Glastonbury Festival of Gaming. Pretty much, I think. Yeah, definitely good. Oh, Josh says it's all about the minis. No card games or board games or other such distractions. Well, Mr. Potter, I think you'll find. I'll see if we can find them and get some on, on video. But uh, yeah, definitely very much mini focused. Um. Oh, Ayumi says, I'm hoping the first time I get to go to Adepticon, I can finally learn OSL. I can never get it down. Definitely um, keep an eye on the uh, seminars um, before they uh, go on sale and um, check out those. There's usually, there's usually one or two or three seminars on OSL Yeah, uh, done by different folks. Uh, so you'll get a different sort of a approach from each one. I took one, uh, ooh, when would it have been? Six or seven years ago from um, Victoria Lamb. So, oh, me too. I took that one too. Yep. Did you get the little, you got the little Hobbit, little Halfling mini? Uh, I don't yeah. remember what the mini was. It was holding up a torch. And that was the, the light been. source. That was good. It was a lot of fun. I mean, that's the person to get the. Get the yeah. <laughs> To get the to get the instruction from. I mean, she was essentially, you know, the first person to have done it in miniature painting, as far as I know. Unless there's somebody that oh, the first person to um, that's really awesome. To, I, th I think to really uh, focus on it or to, to make it a focus of the the piece. So yeah. yeah, she she did a lot of fantastic stuff to to raise awareness of it for sure. She's so cool too. Yeah. yeah. They're good. And you're not just saying that because she's Australian, right? No, not at all. 
I just I just know not to mess with Australians because if they can survive Australia, they can kill me. So all right. <laughs> I'm generally nice to y'all. We're not gonna I'm not gonna kill you, Jeff. You just gotta be careful like the situations you get into with us. For sure. <laughs> it's really the main reason that Jeff's doing this from his house. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to I'm a little bit, like a little bit worried that I'm actually <laughs> that I'm actually like poisonous. Or venomous. I'm telling you, one of the two. It's been long enough both. there, yeah. Yep. <laughs> like I've been bit, yeah, I'm sure you've been bitten by at least one radioactive spider. Possibly. I'm not sure it was radioactive, but So, so I kinda missed a spider. Um, the beginning, but Jeff, what miniature are you painting? So I am putting down uh, some base coats right now on a number of the let's see if I can get this right, Dave. Aldari. Yep. I, I'm going to call them Eldar. Um, sure. Aldari <laughs> Rangers or whatever from oh, okay. um, the Elder Chomans box set. And I'm going to be painting them uh, to go in an army that is... Um, and now I really don't know how to pronounce this. It's either Craftworld Mimera or Craftworld Mimeara or something along those lines. Um, I, but I it's from one of the one. older Forge World. Mimera? Yeah, I think so. Mimera, yep. Um, uh, it's one of they're from the older um, one of the older Forge World, uh, in, in whatever Imperial Armor books Imperial or Armor whatever. Books. Technically, right. I think at this point in the canon, that Craft World is long since dead and gone. But uh, I don't really care. I just think they look cool, so I'm gonna paint the new guys up looking like that. It sounds like a plan. That's cool. I like it. There we go. I decided to go with a uh, sort of a more of a birch kind of look for the, for the uh, staff for the half of his axe there oh sweet because my standard sort of start with charred brown work up to through beige brown would be a little bit too close to the um to his skin there we go uh, so this is a weird thing as well because i'm used to I know. <laughs> it's getting used to when I, when I pull it back now, it comes back towards me on the screen, but otherwise, there we go. I'll get it right eventually. But yeah, um, but yeah, definitely, uh, Ayumi, um, that would be the way to go. But of course, uh, if you do get there and you aren't in a class, uh, hang out a little bit at uh, Fort Wapple and there'll be somebody there who knows what you need to know and will be happy to pass yeah, just, it on. Just strike up a conversation if somebody's doing something that looks interesting to them and to you and, and ask questions. Yep, definitely. Or she'll probably make a new friend. Yep. Indeed. Uh, Sean says, hello. Hello, Sean. Hey, Sean. And uh, James was asking, uh, Gretchen, what happened to her? Uh, Gretchen is uh, going to be back next week. So um, I think Gretchen's going to be phoning in remotely. Yes. And I might be phoning in remotely. <laughs> we'll have to talk. We'll talk after the show. Find out if I if I won't be too um, merry at Adepticon on Thursday evening. See, your St. Patty's Day is next Thursday. Next, it's next Wednesday <laughs> when I arrive. So now I have two goals on Thursday, and remember, I said that my schedule was clear, so <laughs> I can track Dave down and first of all make sure he is too merry. And then oh. on top of making sure he's too merry, if he does dial in, make a cameo appearance. So now I have a goal for Thursday. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> awesome. Um, Josh says, I mean, I know that there are board games played at the Depticon. Sure, it's not the, not the main focus, but there is a board game library. So if you uh, don't have anything planned, uh, Jeff, for example, has nothing planned, so he could head to the board <laughs> game library and get, hang out and get some get some board gaming going on. Um, Play some ticket or ride. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how many copies they have of that, but it could be the way I to have go. No idea. I'm pretty sure there's a Catan in there someplace. Oh no doubt, no doubt. Um, just uh, Sean says the scouts are nice models. They are. They're, these new ones are. Absolutely beautiful. They really, they are so cool. Um, actually, all the Eldar models, <laughs> Eldari um, yeah. models are um, just super cool. I was, who was I? 
was talking to somebody a couple days ago where, you know, or maybe it was months. I don't know. I can't tell time at this point anymore. Yep. Uh-oh. Yep. Have you frozen? Just frozen. No. Oh, it's okay. He'll come back. He'll be back. It's Just, okay. Oh, He'll be back. I'm back. Okay. Oh, For a wow. second there, I thought maybe you'd already left. No, sometimes it it'll glitch, but if you just wait for it, it'll it'll go back. So wait for. I'm glad I didn't just reboot (laughs) everything. Yeah, don't reboot it. Just (laughs) let it keep going because it's on. It's the connection on our part. So. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh oh, Aldari model, yes. models. Um, yeah, they're they're super cool. Someone was saying the other day to me that they were like, oh, I was you know kind of disappointed with you know there wasn't a lot of new there or whatever and. I, I kind of told him, I was like, look, I, like, I just wanted the same design as, you know, the old, you know, Goodwin inspired designs. I just want all of that just with clean sculpts and maybe slightly upscaled and a little bit more dynamic poses. That's all I want. <laughs> yep. Which is exactly what you were, exactly what you were going to get. They weren't going to change the, yep. change the look too much at all. I'm good with it. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, the, sort of the classic undersuit with those armor plates goes all the way back to the '90s, or late late '80s, really. I guess. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, we need awesome what stuff. three more aspects, right? And then we're uh, done. Something like that. Sure. Need warp spiders, swooping hawks. No, four more. Wait, warp spiders, swooping hawks, striking scorpions, and fire dragons. Fire dragons. Right? Yep. Exactly. I'm not going to be that guy and complain about why no new Eldar aspect warriors. Yeah. Well, you get to get to enjoy those next time around. Or, yeah, exactly. Or there might be uh, other boxes, other Definitely box not. sets that that release Who knows? them. Who knows? We'll see you along the way. I mean, I kind of. It's the one thing where, like I said, I'll, I'll never be that guy, but I kind of do understand the questions that pop up when people are like, "All right, look." <laughs> you know, you didn't do new striking scorpions, but you did shining spears. Like, come on now. <laughs> like, what What was the thought process? Well, I think it's because uh, striking scorpions have had like three different iterations, whereas shining spears have only had the yeah, one. That's fair. So that's this is fair. the second iteration of those. That's fair. I'll but, leave uh, my fine cast opinions on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair as well. That's all good. <laughs> Uh, Jez says, uh, Dave isn't venomous, his retractable spines and necrophagic toxic, though. And he does spit poison oh. 20 feet when surprised. <laughs> I never got that down. Never well, luckily, that. you're not that surprised. You don't mm-hmm. get surprised off it, so. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. because of the Australian and everything, you know, it's hard to surprise one of them. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's funny, somebody posted a, a meme about um, that involved uh, sort of uh, Mad Max, like the Road Warrior, sort of humongous, Lord Humongous, and uh, wears and that <laughs> kind of thing. How are all supposed to be wearing sort of leather bondage gear and football pads? And then they were like, hey, Dave, don't you dress like that in Australia normally? I said, oh, no, is it, is it, isn't it mandatory to dress like that in Australia? I said, it's not mandatory, but it does get you to the front of the line at the pub. So. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Josh says, um, Dave can climb buildings with his chin. And I did tell that story, didn't I? I told that story on the show. Yeah. There's more fall-off buildings with my chin. But anyway. Uh, oh, we have a um, Facebook user. Oh, that's Mark Maxi. Mark Maxi? Yeah. Cool. Hi, Mark. How's it going? <laughs> yes, hey, one Mark. more week. One more week. Very cool. You can see uh, Mark's entries up close and personal. He's been sharing them on the, uh, the Facebook group, which is excellent. So it has been cool to see those. Mark, thank you for sharing those. Uh, 
James says, uh, I think I'll go next year and take one of my big ships. That would be cool, James. Very cool. I think, oh, which, which year was it? Uh, I think it was like 2014? Maybe 2013, 2014. Uh, there was a uh, group that uh, did a... Um, that brought along a, a big game that you would have loved, James. It was all pirates. Oh, yes. Remember the huge table? Um, yes. So there's like an enormous, the table was, was massive. It was like 20 feet by 30 feet kind of thing. But it wasn't all and it was, like a solid table. It was, you moved in, you could move in and around the the islands and the the waterways. Most of the like game, that. most of the game was like wildly inappropriate, like innuendo, wasn't it? If I remember correctly. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it was. Yeah, it was, it was definitely, it was played after hours. But... <laughs> Yeah, but no, the setup that they... I see uh, that with no judgment. Forward. That's my thing. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the... the um, oh, there was... Yes, I think it was... Yeah. No, I can't remember exactly what the name was. I, I think I know, but I don't think I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a family show. So, um, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, all good. Yeah. Um, what have we got? Uh, do, 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 sorry, I'm looking there. Uh, I think we're going to actually take one of my big ships. That would be cool. Uh, just as, uh, they still look like Jez Goodwin's incredible sketch designs. They do. I think that was one of the first uh, White Dwarves that I got back in the day. Uh, White Dwarf 121. Something like that. Yep. Um, it's absolutely one of my favorite. It is 121? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know uh, if it's 121. It's just my favorite. Um, but yeah, that had uh, lots of the fantastic uh, Jess Goodwin concept sketches for all of the Aspect Warriors in it. So, well worth tracking down if you are an Eldar fan. But uh, <laughs> Jess also says, I'm still waiting for Femir. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're going to do with Femir. I might have to wait until uh, Warhammer the Old World comes back. They might do Wait a little there. longer on that one. Yep. Opportunity to explore Albion. But that would be cool. Uh, Sean says they still need to release the Avatar. Maybe Eldar will get a second wave. Well, they've shown yeah. it quite a bit. So I'm guessing that... Oh, yeah, there could be a surprise. Maybe there'll be something announced point. at Adepticon next Wednesday night. Yeah. I didn't think about the fact that he, they had, they'd shown him, but they hadn't now they hadn't actually released him. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, we'll have to see. I feel like I I feel like Wednesday has to be the new Heresy box, though, right? I mean, that has to be the announcement, or at least one of them. It could be. I don't know. Hmm. We'll have to see. We could do a deep dive on um, Games Workshop conspiracy theory Twitter. Well, let's not do that. That's okay. I agree. Let's stay in the yeah. lane. <laughs> See that over there, Simba? That, you should never go there. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I was gonna. I was gonna take it more down the um, Monty Python pass. <laughs> suggest they should go back to Camelot. Yes. On second thoughts, let's not go there. It's such a silly place. It's a silly place. So, uh, but yes, it'll be good. Uh, Mark says, super excited, but super nervous too. Josh says, you'll do fine, Mark. Best thing to do is get critiques. Um, and those will be available for sure. Uh, oh, James says, his 18 by 22 inch trimaran might be, uh, might be done by then. That would be cool. Oh, Josh says, oh, that pirate game. I recall that one. Indeed. Yeah, it was a handful of something. <laughs> yep. It was. Uh, but uh, also, Jez is asking, what paint is that you're using on the Ranger? There. Um, this I am just using um, as a base coat. Um, I think you can frame here. Uh, Vallejo model color, Prussian, uh, Prussian blue. 
it just makes a really nice base coat because I'm going to be going up to much lighter, more blue greeny blues um, with the uh, Temple Guard and Baharath. I can never pronounce his name or her Baharath. name. I actually don't know. Baharath. I'd go with um, Baharath. So, Baharath. I actually like that inflection better. Baharath. Um, Baharath. So, yeah, since it's going to be getting quite light, and what I try to do, I'm, I'm with this new round of Eldar, I'm trying to make them really, like, quite bright and and um, uh, quite colorful. So I went with sort of a very, very heavy Zenithal Prime, almost, um, almost just pure white Prime, but you can kind of see. Yeah. There's some shading in there. Is everything okay? Oh, he's frozen again. I'm glad. I'm glad that he froze with grumpy face, though. <laughs> oh wait, did you actually not freeze? You just pretended. No, I, no, I did freeze. <laughs> you, you pretended to freeze. No, it, it, um, it did freeze, but it froze right on. Yeah, it was a good freeze. Right on Jeff's grumpy face. Good. Good. <laughs> nice. So that's inter- that's good to know that like I've got a split second to make a crazy face. Yeah. I can still hear it. it cuts out for me a second before it cuts out on the stream. That's good to know. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> um. Anyway, so yeah, I wanted to make these guys quite bright. So basically, painting over white, but that means it's kind of a pain because I've got to go in and and lay in a little bit of a darker color in some of the areas where I do want a little more shadow. So okay. hence the, the darker blue, even though these guys are going to be quite bright. Right. Plus the Can cloaks just... are going to, I think I'm going to do snow camo on the cloaks and I don't want to go all the way up from black to white on them. With the, with the snow camo, what sort of um, approach do you think you'll take? Are you just going to do it? You're not just going to do it white, obviously. Um, no, so I did some you, research. Otherwise, you, did, you wouldn't use the word camo. You'd just say white. White, white clothes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> white um, clothes. I, did some, I did some research, and I think what I'm going to do, I haven't quite decided yet, and it's something I'm going to have to experiment with. So I'm, that's why I'm starting on the armor right now, because it's not something I would experiment necessarily on stream. Um, but I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm probably going to mimic the, the jagged sort of angular camo pattern that, um, in fact, you can see it's the same one that um, Games Workshop did, or the heavy metal team did on the uh, scout jet bikes that are in this set. Okay. If you look at the same Han red that they did, it's actually like, if you look, it's actually like yeah. a slight angular camo pattern on it. So right. I think I'm going to mimic that pattern and just use like white and like two fairly light grays not getting it too dark but just white and like light gray and just keep it like neutral and desaturated because the armor is going to be this sort of bright blue green color and okay. the whites of the rifles will be like white white like really bright white so just keep and they'll be like a cool white i think i'm gonna do so i'll keep the cloaks rather desaturated and just okay. you know some gray triangle triangular kinds of shapes right Okay. No, that'd be cool. Found um, so, so yeah, it's kind I found of a really good graphic form. It goes across the basically it's it's a jagged line that goes across the entire surface. Well, they're more like um or, I wish I could show you. I found a really good example um like graphic when I searched like snow camo patterns on Google. Um okay. it was kind of a they're more they're they're more like um polygonal shapes. So they've got like um, they're, they're tri- like not triangles, but like triangular. And so you'll have like kind of um, sharp corners and maybe it's like a six or seven sided kind of blob and those overlaid on top of each other okay. um, in various different like sizes and shapes. So we'll see. We'll okay. see how it works. That yeah, sounds interesting. Something a little bit, a little bit different. Nice. They also could end up just being white cloaks if it turns out to be a disaster, and I'm like, no, thank you, and I repaint it. (laughs) We'll see. I don't think you'll uh, just do white cloaks. Is it something like that? I just put an image on the screen. That's exactly it. 
That's exactly okay. the English <laughs> reference that I found. Cool. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but that's what I want to do. I would say... Do the um, the mid tone like paint the mid tone over? If you could leave the the cloak color that you've got, that primer color, yeah, as the white, yeah, and paint the mid tone over that first, and then paint yep. the dark tone because you can do all the tidying up with that dark tone. That's what I'm thinking. I think that's a good idea, and. And then I could just got to figure out, maybe I'll just do some like glazing to kind of do the shading. But again, I want this stuff to be fairly bright, so I'm not going to go like super contrasty with it. Right. Not not quite heavy metal style, but like closer to heavy metal than my normal stuff, where right. these guys but are going to be part of the army. Not as, not as intense um, contrast changes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I tend to, I tend to paint like really... Um, anyone who's seen my stuff I, I try to I, I try to like emulate or like move much more towards um uh sort of the look that people like now I'm nowhere near as good as this so please don't misunderstand me but like more <laughs> more like the look of like the rich grays of the world where you have like a very strong like defined light source and everything right. else is very much in shadow and you get that that really stark contrast and dynamic lighting I yeah. like that it's a lot of fun until I try to do it on something that I want to look really bright and, you know, sort of right. look good from a lot of different <laughs> angles and stuff. And so then it can look a little bit drab on, at least for me. Um, yeah. So on my stuff, uh, Rich pulls it off somehow and I haven't figured out his magic yet. But um, yeah. so I think this will be a little bit different. I'm also not used to painting on white primer coats. So this is m massively uncomfortable for me. Right. As it just you, you feel you need to be thinking about it all the time, thinking about what's next. Or yeah, yeah, and I just feel like I'm having or... to be. Yeah, I have to be more careful because I the whole reason I did the white undercoat was so I could preserve that in on the whites and the grays and stuff. And if I cover it up with darker colors, then I've just made more work for myself, and that was a, you know, right. not the point. And the other <laughs> thing is too that I have to like outline more stuff now because if it's black undercoat, I can just leave a gap, and there's my outline you know right yeah oh. excellent well, i'm just gonna um it's all about experimenting yeah <laughs> that's true um just quickly i'm gonna uh just pop this guy aside for a sec and bring in some uh minis that i painted up today for a um for an article to go in that's going into i think it's the may issue of Game Trade Magazine. Some, oop, let me get it right. There we go. Check that out. Oh, he's cool. From um, Bardsung. So these guys are uh, Reavers. I think there's the card that I took home with me. Uh, Leona gave me some of these last week. We're going to be painting some of these in April. April. Right, yep, we're in April. Some more minis from the, the thing, so you're getting a, a sneak preview. But um, I did a bit of experimenting on these. Um, where I primed them black and then sort of painted, like dry brushed them. I kind of turned them around and dry brushed them this way with a dark green. So I think it was uh, Caliban green from GW. So that the underside was all green. And then came back and hit primed them with white from an angle. Oh. I'm get that right. So kind of from this angle, and didn't do a didn't do a big white prime. Just did a, a sort of a quick burst. So that meant that I have areas like on the I don't know if you can see it on the face there, where there's actually green in the shadows and green That's in the cool. skin there. So then I just decided that let me move it. Oh, I'm going to hold it still. There we go. Uh, and yeah, just to sort of experiment with that. And then I went back and st I started for this guy. I started with the silver, painted all of the silver. I'm going to turn it around so you can kind of see him the right way up. 
and then I'm going to find the right there. There's the right spot. Um, yeah, then uh, painted the silver on the areas that were white because this guy's got a lot of armor on him. So all the areas that have been white, uh, all the armor areas basically, I painted those silver and then went and went back and forth on the dark green areas. I highlighted those with a bit of dark green mixed with silver. And then on the silver areas, I shaded those with a bit of dark green mixed with silver. So it's kind of a very different way for, of working for me. That looks but, super uh, cool though. Yeah, it came out. It's a it's a really sort of interesting batch. So I might chuck these on the spinner if that's cool, Leona. Yeah. I'll just. Um, but you'll be able to see that I didn't paint the back of them because they're not going to be. You're not going to see the back of them in the article. And I have to submit the article tomorrow because I never leave anything until the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> You're just talking about that Ever. not painting the backs of miniatures today. Yeah. <laughs> One of our mutual friends and I were talking about that. Uh, um, nice. Someone made a joke about not having to do it for a certain competition at some point. Okay. And uh, I realized I had been doing things terribly wrong because I took the time to paint the back of my miniatures for that competition. <laughs> and apparently I didn't have to. No. Right. Yeah. Fun times. I always like to. Uh, uh, there we go. I do like to paint the backs of the miniatures, usually. So for this one, because the painting the front and the sides was a bit of an experiment, it's like, this is going to take me a little bit longer to work out exactly how I should be painting the backs. But. Uh, I was also thinking as well, because how many minis are in that Bardsung box? 120? Uh, there there are... I could look at the box. Do you want me to look at the box or just guess? No, no, let's just guess. It's like 40, 50, I think. Ooh, is that all? Is that all? I thought you were going to say like 400. No, it's not 400. It weighs that much, but... um. No, I think, uh, but when you're painting a lot of minis. Sorry, I'm getting the, I am actually getting the miniature cam, just so you know, it's coming. For the snow, for the snow. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, no, they look really good. I like what you've done. Oh, okay. Right. Miniature painting. Right. But, uh, no. Those pants that they're wearing. Um, yes, sorry. I turned your mic off for a second. You my, is it back on now? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. 
You're thank, good now. You're fine. Thanks for joining us, Jeff, on the best night of the, <laughs> the year. Um, well, no, I didn't. I thought it might just be me. So I was going to pipe up and say, hey, I couldn't hear Dave. But then Dave appeared to be like talking and I didn't want to interrupt you. So, Right. <laughs> um, I will, will actually mention that there's a really good Irish pub nearby that um, oh, Leona may have been what? to, I guess. I, I, I guess heard that. Leona went there before the show. Um, the Still. I do know this still. I've actually yep. been to this still. Yeah, that's very close to here. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, where was I? What did I say? I said something about oh, being no, inspired by our work. The artist is fantastic. Lots of layers. They're not easily translatable to directly to a, um, a paint job. But uh, yeah, so the article is going to be about experimenting and being inspired by. A uh, game or art from the game. That's cool. So, and then I was going to say, I just remembered the pants on these these guys that are spinning around. You might not be able to see anymore. Uh, originally, I was going to do them sort of in a a pale brown, but then I decided that once I'd started to put a little bit of purple in there, that uh, blending in some uh, sand yellow. Um, which is kind of like a little bit like ice yellow, I guess. From now you're Leo. talking my language. Yeah, I think it's a little bit darker. First of all, purple. Hmm? Then pale. Oh, oh, then yeah. <laughs> first of all, purple. Right, purple makes everything better. Yeah. Then uh, ice yellow. Ice yellow. Yep, I'm going for that. Let me see. How's that looking? It's like Frank's red hot sauce. Like I'm not going to say <laughs> it, but I put that in everything. Everything. <laughs> it's true. That and ivory. Ivory and ice yellow. Right. Yep. Uh, funny story. I know in recent weeks I've been talking about um, how I've been running low on ivory. Um, the oh, yeah. paint color, not the illegal commodity. Um, Good. But, uh, yeah, running low on it um, and... Uh, Jeff hasn't had any at the um, the games and stuff, so I'm a little bit worried on it. But I did find uh, off white in the Vallejo game color range. Oh, okay. Just uh, today, when I was looking through my sort of stack of paints that I haven't used for a while, uh, look at that on. There we go. Um, I found uh, that I was looking for a more charred brown because I'm starting to run out. Um, I found two bottles of ivory, unopened. Oh. So now I have yeah. maybe some ivory. <laughs> um, have you managed to find, uh, did you manage to, to get any coal black? I did. At any point? I okay, did. cool. Yep. Uh, do, do you know, is that still like a supply issue of that paint? Did it ever, did it go out of print or? No, it basically, um, they, I think they had a, they had a batch come in that wasn't right. Uh, so they had to reject the batch and send it back. And then their paint manufacturers had to make a new batch. So that was the, the gap in the supply. Gotcha. So now they have it. I don't know how long it's going to last. So I did buy four bottles. I was going to say that because I just looked at my painter and when we had that discussion, like it was months ago and we thought yep. maybe the world, like maybe coal black was just going extinct. And I went yep. out to eBay and like bought like eight pots of it or something. Yeah. Je so Jeff went and bought eight pots and then we're talking about it and he goes, oh yeah, yeah, there's a place that on uh, online that you can get it. And I was like, I I've looked and they're all like $15 a pot. It's like, this is crazy. <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 they're, they're on there for like four bucks. And I was like, send me the link. So he sent me the link, and it was like zero available. It's like, yeah, I might have. I, I, I thought they still had them. Well, I did say, look, <laughs> if you run out before there is more stock, let me know, and we can, yep. we can work out some kind of some kind of trade. Some kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. Where I wasn't going to have to pay I mean, $15 a bottle. It might have been $10. Many painters <laughs> just trade in paint. Like <laughs> out of print paints, yeah, I, that is print. not unheard of. <laughs> out of it, print it paints, it is not unheard. Of. <laughs> yeah, I took the longest time because there was um uh, like and and 
uh, I did a bunch of tests for for these guys because um, the Mimera color scheme is this like bright pale blue on the top, but it fades very gradually to this sort of like sea foamish green um, kind of green on the bottom half of their armor. And um, the the color that Games Workshop kind of used when they were putting their stuff together, that color is out of print. It's like a shade that's no longer available. Um, and so I spent a long time like trying to figure out and replicate it because I was being really stubborn and not going to like eBay trying to find this out of print, you know, shade. And I, I did take a look at what the prices were. And I want to say it was like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks for a pot of this stuff. I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it can get uh, it can get kind of crazy. Very definitely. One good thing with a lot of the uh, the really old GW paints is the uh, company that made them originally, Coat d'Arms in France, uh, still makes that paint range. Yep. So you can pick up bottles of. Uh, Goblin Green that were made last week, but it would be the same color as uh, the Goblin Green you bought from Games Workshop 25 years ago. Yeah, that is the coolest development. Didn't they only recently start remaking them? I'm not sure about that. It's possible. But yeah, I haven't heard. How's that looking? Turn him around. Turn him around. Nice. There we go. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm celebrating having all this coal black. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Using. We just paint everything coal black now. Not not everything, but all everything will have some coal black in it. Yep. But yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh, it is eight. Oh, it is eight o'clock. Oh my goodness, it's eight o six. Look at that. Uh, sorry, just quickly, I'll run through the, the chat. Um, oh, Lutron says, wow, they look fantastic. Cool. Uh, oh, can he hear you again? He's back. Uh, welcome, Lutron. Yes, um, yes, their artwork is very artsy. That's um, in regard to um, Steamforged art, I'm guessing. Bessie's painted a lot of uh, stuff from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. So I'm guessing that... Uh, the thing they're going there too. Josh Potter says, I too have found the benefits of ice yellow. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Just so, so this is why there isn't any. <laughs> yep. Now, that was one of those things. I think two or three, I think it was two weeks ago, I said, mm, I have to go and visit um, games and stuff, but I'm not telling you why. Now I can tell you why. <laughs> it was to buy some of the coal black. I did not buy it all, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to buy some. <laughs> he was going to purchase it and then tell the rest of us that it was available. Wow. Which I definitely did, but unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's sometimes you just, you got to do the things you got to do. Um, I'll just leave them there like that. Uh, but yes, um, Jay says, I can match almost any color. Yep. One of the things that I found, um, there's a deep... Oh, dark sea green, dark sea green, dark sea blue, dark sea blue, dark sea blue, dark sea blue from Vallejo looks very much like uh, there we go, coal black. Yep. Uh, and actually, if you were to paint them out, I think they're very similar. The difference comes when you mix white into them. Yep. Mixing white into this gives you a very um, very strong, sort of uh, vibrant sort of color. Mixing white into this really desaturated. This is quite desaturated, sort of underlying. Yeah. So it's more of the mixing was the, was the issue that I was having. Yep. So and the, um, there, there's a consistency difference too, depending on there is true. what you want to work true. with or whatever. Dark, um, yeah. Coal black is pretty transparent. Right, okay. I mean, for, you know, for a black. Oh, um, sorry, just quickly, uh, Dave Hummel has popped in to say hi and bye. Hey oh, bye. Bye, Dave. We'll see you later. Um, 
Jez says, I can't match colors well. I'm monochromatic colorblind. Oh. And then laughs about it. No, um, I think it's one of those things. If you're if you're used to it, uh, you you find ways to enjoy your painting. Oh, I do. I'm there's a couple of um, I have like a I don't know what the name of the color blindness is, but I um I, I have think it's troubles, Eldari. Uh, Eldari. It's Eldari. That. Yeah. That's the Eldari way you pronounce color, color blindness. It's Eldari. I'm dying. <laughs> Eldari. Sorry. Eldari color blindness. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have I have trouble differentiating between um, like orange and green a lot of times, okay. and so sometimes I have to check stuff with my like phone or with a photo or whatever, and just make sure I'm, you know, on the right track, not putting green on something. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you just you can work around it. Yeah. Uh. Lutron asks, uh, sorry, I missed it. Uh, Ice Yellow is from what company? That is from Vallejo. It's in the uh, model color range. Um, just quickly, I'll show you a color on my palette here. There's this color here. Is um, That's, ooh, what is it? Sand Yellow. So oh, that's Ice Sand yellow. yellow. Yeah, that's Sand Yellow. And Ice Yellow oh. is just a little bit lighter. A little bit cooler. A little, it's like a touch of green in it, I think. Is it green? Yeah. A touch of green in it. Just really very faint. It's either green or orange. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I was going to say blue, but then, it, then of course, that would just make it yellow. Uh, green. That so, one I can see. Yeah, that one yeah, I can see. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Um, Sean says, looks like the old Deadly Nightshade. Now, actually, the Deadly Nightshade was a little bit more um, sort of indigo purple. Uh, but the... Um, this one, these two are very much um, green. That dark sort of green sort of, there we go. Might just be the camera changing that color there. Um, just as my color color theory is good, thankfully. It's good. Yeah. Oh, green and orange are the same gray. Oh, that would be tough. Oof. I guess it'd be a lot of color schemes that you end up using on a fairly regular basis that yeah but uh no fantastic anyway yes leona is prompting us we're getting on to the uh the miniature showcase for the week oh, uh, is that miniature showcase is our new title for it yes that's working title working title it's uh it sounds like a title i would come up with which means it lacks oh, whimsy i'll change it i'll change the camera back jeff <laughs> that's okay i come back there we go that's cool, cool. easy awesome okay Starting off, we're uh, looking at this. Um, it's very cool. Is this a, I'm, I want to say, it doesn't seem stout enough to be a dwarf pirate, and the lack of boots makes me think it is a uh, halfling pirate. Hobbit. Oh, halfling. Hobbit. I was going to say hobbit. Yeah. Hobbit, pirate. hobbit pirate. Halfling pirates. Pirate. Yeah, so it's a, it's a hobbit uh, corsair of umber. But uh, no, uh, <laughs> this halfling pirate is, is very cool. Um, is I love cool. that eye patch there. Yeah, I have not seen this model before. Josh, do you know Me where either. it's from? Josh might know. But uh, no, looking cool there. I think the thing I um, like the most there is Andrew has uh, gone in and painted, so with the, the hair and the beard, um, gone in there and painted those nice uh, gray streaks through the hair. Yeah. Um, I, f I feel like this one might have been uh, copying my hair color. But... Uh, no, nice work, Andrew. Looking good. I like him. <laughs> and just says, oh, cool, short John Silver. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Looking nice space wolf. Yep. They're looking Wait, is cool. it a space wolf? I can't tell from the, the heraldry. It is. Um, so this, on it's a, uh, so on the, um, well, I'm going to guess that it's a space wolf, but on the, uh, his right, our left, that um, red and yellow. Oh, I can see the claw. So there's, there's yeah. a red claw, um, which would be uh, the colors of uh, the blood claws. So yep. this guy's, a, I'm guessing he's a, uh, an assault intercessor. It uh, looks like that. And then on the other shoulder pad is, uh, it's white there with the, probably like Logan Grimnar's company, uh, sort of the rear oh, wing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I. I saw just the claws, and for some reason, I thought um, 
Uh, I can't think of the creature it is. Doesn't matter. Looks great. I, I like the um the the armor lining is very yeah. neat in this. There's a lot of definition between each armor panel. Yep, I agree. I think it's looking uh looking very cool. And I like that the um that Andrew hasn't tried to make so you've got that bright white on the left shoulder pad, bright yellow on the right shoulder pad, and everything else is fairly um neutral and desaturated. Um so he hasn't tried to compete with that white shoulder pad by painting the um the skull on the uh helmet there too bright. I am also I'm also a big yeah. fan of space wolves that lean grey. As yep. opposed to lean blue. Yep, the pale blue. Looking good, That's Andrew. Nice work. Oh, Ashlyn. He's painted Ooh. up a, uh, a nun with a gun and a big power fist. I did see this and I was like, I wonder if Ashlyn's going to put this in her uh, Sister of Battle army. I love it. Great Ooh, highlights in the black. Yep. Yeah, definitely. The hearts on the black are looking great, uh, and to go on the on the back there, mm -hmm. down the down the bottom where the leg is kind of kicked back, and obviously the, everything yeah. underneath that uh, the the wimple there is in shadow. Yeah, on the back. Yeah, so. that's I mean that's sort of almost like cast shadow down yeah. from the pieces. That's great attention yeah. to detail. Looking very cool there, but uh, and Jess says. Um, that's rampant in heraldry. That's oh. <laughs> that 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 pose. So that'd be like lion rampant or wolf rampant. Oh, right. Okay. Yep. So um, yes. Anyway, <laughs> that would be sable, sable wolf rampant on or field. Oh. Getting deep into heraldry there. Um, oh, fantastic. Ayumi, uh, I think we saw a work in progress of this um, a yes. couple of weeks ago. But this is from uh, Monster Apocalypse uh, and is looking fantastic. One of the things I really loved um, last time we talked about it uh, is the different textures that Ayumi's got going on here. Uh, mm -hmm. So obviously there's the, the feather texture, the scale texture, um, the non-metallic metals for the um, the headdress and the various parts of the uh, the kawatal there. Uh, yeah, the NMM is great. Yep. And then taking the time that with the um, the underbelly, it's very um, and I want want this to come out the right way. It's very simple and plain, so it's not. I mean, he hasn't overworked that area which would have made yep. it very difficult with all of the other textures that are, that are going on. Um, yeah. So I think it's got that, there's that balance. You've always got to have a, have a spot where your, your eye can rest and it isn't sort of um, constantly sort of moving around little details. But uh, yeah, looking very cool. And I love that bright green at the front of the, the snout of the snake. Mm -hmm. The kawatal. Really draws the eye. Yeah. Yep, super cool. Nice work, Yumi. Oh, Ben Warwick with the Bone Six sneak preview. Oh, my goodness! Has Bone Six gone to? We haven't had the Bone Six Kickstarter yet, have we? Hmm. I wonder if Ben is a employee of Reaper. Mm. Joshua, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he said cool. the scales took forever on that last piece. Very nice. Yeah, but anyway, I um, believe that. yes, this is a very cool little uh, little goblin. I assume it's a goblin. Love those, uh, that scale mail there. But yeah, very nice um, yellowish, more like a much more yellowish green, like a, almost like a mustard yellow for the skin, mm -hmm. um, which is super cool. You don't see that a lot. Yeah, I like it. Sometimes see it on knolls, but not so much on goblins. But yeah, looking very cool there. Nice work. It is a cool goblin. And then uh, we've got Betsy's uh, dwarf. This is from uh, the Journeys uh, in Middle Earth. 
And I don't know which dwarf this is. I can't remember which one had the red cloak. I don't remember. Mm. Paint job's great. Super yeah. clean. It is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, really, really sharp. Yep. Um, love the work on the... Uh, it's Balin. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Betsy. But yeah, beautiful work there. I love the... Um, I think I mentioned in the work in progress on this uh, that I love the um, different textures. Yeah, so we'll talk about the rust textures in this one. Yeah, yeah, the um, the rust and the yeah the the weathering on the the uh, axe there, the way that's that's handled the um, that cloak, those um, blends are beautifully smooth. Yeah, buttery smooth. They look really yeah. great. Yeah. And that uh, little uh, sort of glossy sheen on the on the raven there. Beautiful work, Betsy. Yeah, it's really great. That's awesome. Nice work. Uh, oh, sorry, just quickly, Josh says it's coming. There are some preview figures going out with orders right now. And you know Reaper loves their promos uh, and freebies. Uh, they're being snuck into orders here and there. Nice work. Um, oh, Brad White has painted up this uh, very cool coach. Um, I don't know where this is from, but I'm going to guess that this yeah. is uh, WizKids uh, Anolzas or Deep Cuts. Kind of has that feel. Uh, there's a, the feel of the um, gypsy wagon that we painted uh, yeah. a couple of years ago. But yeah, uh, looking good. I'm liking the... Uh, so there's a lot of, obviously, the, the brown wood that's been used on the coach liking that but the um, and then the that deep red on the uh-huh. um, not only on the the bench the leather sort of the padded the quilted leather bench there but the uh, the roof so I think it's nice that there's that separation of the two the different material showing a different material different color yeah. different um, approach there. well and the pop of color helps to break up you know what is otherwise a lot of wood yep so sort of much brown but uh, yeah, definitely yeah. cool. And I think, um, oh, sorry, can you just go back to me for a second? The owner is on a mission. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to make up the time we ate up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, some very cool um, use of the birch seed pods on the um, the base there for those, that aut- autumnal feel. Yeah, if you can never get hold of those birch seed pods for autumn leaves, definitely do it. Nice work, Brad. Oh, Carl has been painting up a... Uh, That's fun. I'm not sure if you... Did Carl, did you paint... Uh, did Carl paint the car? Or the pinup? Pardon? Or yes. The miniature, I think. The miniature, yep. That's uh, reclining on the... Um, yeah. I'm not sure. That's but, fun. Uh, if you did some did the work on the uh, the car as well, Carl, it's uh, it's looking great. That's a cool kit, but uh, yep, definitely, yeah, looking like a fun project. I think. Um, uh, wait for it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say um, something that could be really neat to do um, as well too, because uh, the car look, does look quite. Um, like a like straight out of the showroom kind of thing. Um, could we need to put a little bit of um, mud splatter or road dust just coming up on the on the lower panels there of the uh, the car, just at, at the back wheel and the front front there. Yeah, that could look quite nice. And maybe a little if you use a little bit of uh, matte varnish in the corners of the windows, that wind the windscreen. That sort of thing, just to just get that little bit of bit of grime. Because no matter how clean you, you think your car is, it's always <laughs> it's always got some dirt somewhere. Am I right, Jeff? Am I right? Um, n- not mine usually. I, oh, I, I, I keep them pretty clean. <laughs> uh, I'll be I'll be honest with you. Sure, I'm like so that guy out there Jeff's with like the car little spray is perfectly bottle. Perfectly clean. Okay. Yeah, perfectly usually. clean. Perfectly clean. Okay, perfectly so you're, you're clean. saying that I shouldn't go like. 12 months between well, car washes by the time i by the time i get to the spot and wipe it off again in time for the model to come 
sit on it and take the photo as this would imply, then yeah, yep. I think it's probably clean at that point. So. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Great work, Carl. Looking awesome. Yeah, it looks good, Carl. Uh, oh, Chris. Yep. Chris is painting this up for his, uh, for his own Sisters of Battle Army. And uh, yeah, fantastic work there on the thank plasma you, thank coil. Thank you. Thank you for the plasma coil glow. I am such a huge fan of this style of plasma coil glow. Yep. Um, I know that seems like a small detail, but it, it really adds, I think it looks ace, uh, really realistic. Um, and it adds, um, I don't know, it just makes the weapons look more menacing. I think, I think it's super cool. Yep. Absolutely. So I think um, the way that I've seen this done, um, so this this one would have been probably the whole thing would have been painted white then the magenta put on right. a little bit of white mixed in for the highlight on the magenta on the coils there and then some um, once all that was dry some uh, white ink sort of thin down probably. and run over it so just run down that edge there so it's going to bleed into those um, channels or across the bottom there but um you get some uh, like Dale or is it Dale or Rowney inks? I think yeah um, have quite a bit yep. of opacity in got the white. Some of them around just, here. Just got some some handy. I don't have any. Uh, I'd be involved experimenting. <gasps> there it is. Check this it one's not Dale or Ryan. this one's uh, Liquitex, but Liquitex. Okay, cool. Yeah, but that, but does I have, it's have some really idea. good sort of pigmentation. Yeah, it's just super. Yeah. He I mean, it's like super heavily pigmented, and it's an ink, so it's just runny like right. water. Nice. Excellent. That one's titanium white. But yeah, you can use that. And you'd be surprised too when you're doing these um, how dark you can get at the top of the coil. I've seen them almost black in some cases, okay. like really, really yeah. dark. Like it, you can you can really take that glow effect really far. Um, and then also you can see, in, and Chris has done it here too, is if you take. Um, uh, start to glaze some of whatever your glow color is in this case, you know, that magenta right. and sort of glaze around the edges where it's going right. to cast light. You get a little bit of that OSL effect. And yeah. I just think that's super cool. I, I, for a while, GW was painting, even the heavy metal team would sort of paint them as if like the whole coil is glowing. And it, right. it it's not really the way it would look if you think about it, you know, because whatever that source of that glow is going to be like deep in the center of the gun and just kind of radiate outward so it's going to get darker as it gets to the edges of those coils. Looks super cool. Right. Yep. Definitely does. Great work, Chris. Nice one. Oh, Chris Holdridge. He's been painting up uh, oh, yeah. this, this uh, Trajan Valoris, I think. The uh, Grandmaster of the Adeptus Custodes. I can't keep it. I can't keep their names straight. I watch a lot of battle reports or I have a lot of battle reports on in the background. <laughs> so I get these names coming through all the time. Um, <laughs> they have to say it like 50 times because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, this is looking uh, looking very cool. And I like that um, Chris has switched it up a bit. Instead of going for gold all over the armor, uh, yeah. it's just, just got those gold plates at the front, but that really dark, deep, um, purplish blue uh, for the rest of the, other, uh, rest of the armor. Purple and gold. You cannot go wrong with purple and gold. Purple and gold, yep. Always going to be good. But yeah, nice work, Chris. Great color choices there. Oh, Clive has painted up this uh, crazy shaman. Ooh. Looking absolutely wild. And I think one of my favorite things about this one is, so you've got the um, those desaturated tones, the um, the browns, the, um, the orange is desaturated there as well. And then the bright plumage of those feathers, the bright, the bright, yellow the bright blue green you can tell they were like plucked from a um, sort of tropical bird in deep in the rainforest yeah that's cool but yeah very cool nice work there Clive looks great yeah I like the foliage too on the base looks good yep uh, Daniel Estep has painted up a couple of uh, minis here oh fun I think um I think Daniel might have taken this photo outside. It's quite intense, sort of sunlight coming through there. It's casting a lot of shadow on the on the mini 
in his face there. But uh, I do like these um, these two characters. Particularly love the um, that flamboyant purple. Mm-hmm. Uh, purple and the green. That, yep. Yeah, it's that just uh, you know this guy would be quite fancy. <laughs> quite quite fancy. You wouldn't find him in the uh, the common like in the the common room at the at the local tavern. No, not it's the one we hang out in. Yeah. No, definitely not. No, he's gonna be the one. They'd be in the room we can't get into. Yeah. Yeah. The one with the little rope across in front of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I can't get in there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, definitely um, great looking minis there. I think uh, yeah, having that purple, a little bit of gold, little pops of gold in there, um, and I love that fancy hat. Nice work, Daniel. Looking good. Oh, he's just got this uh, dragon slayer Ooh. mini there. I think they're using the blue there for the armor. Um, going to go with that scale mail. It's going to be a very um, kind of uh, Atlantis kind of feel for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. I think I um, just started thinking of uh, some of the characters from um, Aquaman. Mm-hmm. But, um, and is, it, is that a metallic blue? Or is the light just hitting it in a certain way? I can't tell. Yeah, not, not too sure. But it does it does have that feel of a um, of metallic blue. Yeah, it looks cool. Might, might good be silver underneath I mean, and then the, the wash over the top. Yeah, um, could be. Good contrast against the red, too. Yeah. Of the yeah. dragon head. Definitely working nicely there. Uh, but I do love that little uh, little touch of blood on the on the bottom of the sword. Yeah. The tip, the tip of yeah. the sword. Slunged it in. Blown it out. But yeah, nice work, Denise. Yeah, it looks great. I hope your character has been slaying many dragons. Uh, Fabrice has painted up this cool uh, old Mordheim uh-huh. witch hunter. Um, looking very cool. Is there. that a Mordheim model? Yeah, yeah. That's from the uh, oh. from the witch witch hunter um, war band. I love that model. Oh, it is super cool. Definitely good. One of the things that Fabrice has done here, though, is I don't think that it usually has a uh, a beard on it. Really? Yeah. That's great. So for reasons I uh, painted that in, it, it looks uh, looks great. It looks like it is actually sculpted on. But, yeah. Uh, unless I'm completely mistaken. But thinking back to my... It's a great shadow to the Witcher face. It sets it off really nice. Yep. Definitely uh, definitely very cool. But no, I think um, that nice little pop of blue in the middle as well, mm-hmm. surrounded by all of that, sort of the, all of the blacks and browns there. Great choice yeah. for Reese. Nice work. Definitely. Oh, Kevin has been painting this oh. bust. Where's this bust? From? I don't know. I'm wondering if it's a um, if it's a game piece. Just looking at the base of it. Is Jeff frozen again? He has. <laughs> Jeff is frozen again. I thought maybe he was pretending. Did I do for it? A second there. Yes. Yep. <laughs> no. You did. You got a good face. You got a good face. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I'm frozen. Oh, time to make a face." Yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, not sure where this is from. Uh, it just says uh, "awesome bust." I'm not sure. But uh, I, I am loving the um, the orange and dark green for the, yeah. the armor for the outfit. There is looking excellent. But then taking that dark green and making that super vibrant up on top of the uh-huh. um, on, up on top of the head and the, the volume of the green okay. is working yeah. really nicely light at the top really dark at the bottom there the paint job has a um, gives it like a real that combined with the sculpt I think too um, has yeah. like a like a real claymation quality to it right you know, like a yeah. stop motion animation. Like you almost, I, like I kind of half expect it to like move. Um, right. uh, it's super cool. You think it's going to appear in the next Leica film? I yeah, could. If, 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 Leica, <laughs> if Leica were to do a cyberpunk film? Yes. How awesome very, that? very well could. They need to do yep. a space. I think that'd be they right. need to do a space one now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, looking very cool. You did a great job there, Gavin. Looks yeah, Gavin, looks great. Oh, Graham. Just pinned it up. Uh, oh. 
Lord Mormont of the Night's Watch. Yeah, looking very cool. I think it's J.O.R. J.O.R. Mormont. But uh, no, it looks great. I think um, one of the things that's always tough with the Night's Watch models, because you want to paint them black, they're described as black, black furs, black leather, black everything. Yep. Um, that can get very dull very quickly. Yep. Uh, but I think Graham's done a great job here. There's a bit of a, um, like on the, the under robe there, uh, he's got um, a bluish tinge to it. They've got that nice sort of texture going on on the outside robe, the, the edge of that cloak. Um, it's looking very cool. A dark brown for the gloves rather than going for uh, dark brown leather, rather than going for black as well. It's looking cool. The, uh, the scale mail under there. Well, the, the Jazz, maybe you can help me out. What's what's that, um, the armor plating where it's, um, where there'd be plates of just little rectangles of metal that'd be stitched onto like a leather undershirt. Jazz will be able to tell us. Um, it's got that going on. But yeah, all working really well to, to make, give this uh, guy a really cool look. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to do a model that's all black or, or all that dark and still have it read as not just all one color. And this reads as black, but yeah. has that visual interest. It's cool. Yeah, definitely. It's looking good. And of course, going back to the um, the raven there in black. Yeah, looking cool. Excellent work, Graham. Yeah, Graham looks great. Thank you. Oh, Jade has been painting the. This is the War Master. Is that right? I think the War Master That's Titan. a big one, yeah. That's yep. the big one. Yep. And giving it a very uh, chaotic feel there by um, switching out, or basically adding that axe to the uh, as a close combat weapon. And I feel with the colors, if we had to choose which Chaos God, it's definitely a Slaneshi feel. Yeah. I was. Uh, I, I feel, I'm getting like a lot of like punk rock kind of. Yeah, you, that, because the, you're thinking Solanishi because of the pastel kind of vibe yeah. there. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. That's fine. I just, I, I kind of, well, I kind of think like, um, oh shoot, I forget what it's called, but you know, it's like photo backgrounds with the lasers. You know, like I right. feel like this yeah, needs yeah. that in the background. It's got that, right. that vibe, <laughs> that noise marine vibe to it. Yep, the the '80s uh, neon. Yeah, my I wholeheartedly approve. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, excellent choices there, Jade. I think uh, it's going to crush some, uh, crush some large metallic skulls. Nice work. Oh, Jeff has painted up. Um, That's cool. This is cool. Is this uh, who's this from? Those kids. For some reason, I think um, I want to think that we've painted a, a version of this character. By a different company. Sure. Mm. Yes, I'm pretty sure Gale Force Nine has. Yeah, I think you're right. It's called like Ethereal or something. A trial. Ethereal. Ethereal. Yeah. Israel. It's like sure. an angel. But, uh, but now Aldari. Aldari. Aldari? <laughs> Aldari. <laughs> Aldari? Question mark. Um. But no, I think uh, I'm loving the the color choices that Jeff's uh, used here. That um, it's cool. like that super vibrant um, sort of yellow, almost gold, sort of non-metallic, non gold kind of approach. Especially against the, especially against the skin tone. I think that's that skin tone's really neat. Yeah, it is. It is the gold. Great. It's uh, it's beautiful in there. Just everything. It, the skin tone pops against the gold, and the gold pops against the skin tone. It's looking really yeah. uh, very neat. Excellent choice there, Jeff. Great execution. Oh my goodness. This will be Ooh. this will be the last one for now. Okay. So the other ones we'll look at next week. Okay, radio. Cool. Uh so yeah, Josh has done an awesome job on this. Um this is a is this a Namati Reaver? I don't know. It's from the uh I don't know Deepkin for Age of Sigma. This is one of the I love seals. the choice. I love the yeah. choice of the red skin. Yeah. Over it, like that's not something you typically see on these models. I, maybe it is. I don't know. I, I, no. I haven't seen a ton of these models, 
but I don't think it's uh, typical, at least not from the box art. Um, no, no, you uh, definitely, super definitely cool. usually see sort of pale blues and pale, um, pale yeah. skin, pale blues, pale greens. But yeah, it sort of has like a, um, like a gin feel to it almost. Right. You know? Yeah. Super That's cool. That's where the, like, D-J-I-N-N. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Aldari? Aldari? Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think the um, it's that fiery feel that's um, yeah. really accentuated by the the arrows as well and the the little tassel down the front. I think um, Dross is yeah, very very much a bold Dross. I'd love to see the rest of this. How he made the oh oh actually so with all of the different realms in Age of Sigma, there's like the realm of fire and the realm of beasts oh. and the realm of metal and the realm of light and that kind of thing i'm thinking that this is a like these are this is ideneth deepkin from the realm of fire so oh. you see you've got that desert basing so everything's dry and so perhaps That's... there is no water there's no ethacy or that they bring with them um, That's cool something, something like that going on I like to know the full well, especially story especially if Josh. like the Especially if, like, the waves were fire, you know? Like, waves of fire. Uh, pretty cool. That would be awesome. Yep, great work there, Josh. Like yeah, Very looks cool. great. This one. Excellent. And yep, Simon says that Bose highlights are fantastic. Yeah, definitely. It's really nice when you can get um, that sort of, you've got those sort of curves to work with, with gold. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard yeah. to photograph them, too. Especially, like, when you're dealing with metallics like that. Like, yeah. photographing true metal is such a pain. There we go. I'll put that back. I believe I knocked that over. There we go. Well, there we go. So um, all of those miniatures that we showed today were from the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Uh, so if you are on Facebook, come on and join us in the group. Um, we're at 2,100. Yep. Maybe? Yeah. Uh, members so uh yeah we're always looking to add more we've got um people posting stuff there uh every day uh showing their work in progress minis minis they're finished um things they're excited about um so yeah definitely come along oh josh says i wonder if this guy's name is darth maul mm, might mm. be could possibly be darth maul definitely had that feel to it going on but uh yeah definitely uh come along and join us in the group uh post your minis there and uh each week Leona puts the call out for um, minis to show on the show, to display, to talk about, to have a look at. Um, so yeah, definitely very cool. But if you have questions um, about your mini painting, feel free to sort of throw them up on that group. Um, lots of people who have painted a lot of different types of minis, um, model kits, all sorts of stuff. Um, so yeah, we're very happy to see what you're working on. It doesn't have to be Space Marines. It doesn't have to be D and D minis. It can be anything, absolutely anything. It can also be those. It can be Space Marines. Can be D and D minis. We're happy to look at everything. So just quickly, I'm going to paint his base um, gray. Hopefully I can let that dry quickly enough to throw on a... I'm going to throw a, a layer of Saigor Brown over it. Um, I think normally I'd paint it with charred brown and then highlight up. But as I mentioned before, my charred brown reserves are, have been depleted over recent weeks. So I can't just go throwing it around on bases willy-nilly. I have to ration it. I do. It's tough. Tough. I did bring in a couple of other minis that I've been working on as well. It's one of the places where I actually was required to throw it on the bases willy nilly. Mm. The Chard Brown. So, but they're commissioned for a uh, for a friend of mine who's going to be using them at Adepticon next week. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah, originally when we talked about it, 
I was like, when do you need these by? And he goes, ah, oh, you know, whenever. And then he sent me a text last week to say, hey, how are they going? I said, well, you know, however. <laughs> and he goes, well, don't forget I'm taking them to Adepticon next week. I was like, oh, I... Well, they're going great I, then in that case. I guess I misunderstood. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get on that. So I might pop those on the spinner just as... Well, actually, no, I can hold them up here and this camera while I let that grey dry so you don't have to watch paint dry. But there we go. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, wow. I need to do a little bit of work on touching up some of those base edges. But yeah, this is a uh, Auric Gore Grunter. Oh, cool. Let me get this. There we go. So a big ball boy for uh, the Auric War Clans for Age of Sigma. Oh, he looks super cool. So, looks neat. On the, um, here in the studio, we have a huge monitor. It's like massive. So I'm seeing every single brush stroke. And thinking, oh, maybe I should have glazed that area. But uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun to work on. I got to paint uh, twelve of these guys Whoa. in the past in the past week. So I'm going to turn it around this way. Yep, turn him face up. Nice call. Yep, three of them have got uh, this sort of white, this pale grey, white fur. Three of them have black fur, three have like a mid-gray, sort of a brownish gray, and then three have got brown fur. So that you can easily differentiate them on the on the tabletop. He knows which which models are from which unit. But, now did he give you the the color scheme that he wanted, or was that your creative? Uh, we talked direction? about it. I, I painted up a um, a Gloom Spike Gits, so a, like a Night Goblin army for him previously. Uh, okay. And, so they had a lot of have a lot of um, like black robes, and then on their shields we did um, like this bright blue um, moons. So all of the moons mm -hmm. on the shields were done in this bright blue. Okay. So when it came to doing big armor plates, it was like, well, let's just do those in bright blue. Yeah, so oh, it, it looks cool. Pretty cool. Battle neat. damage and then, on the armor uh, looks awesome. Yeah. It worked out okay, I think. It was one of those tough things because normally I'd go through and I'd stipple with like a brown, with like charred brown, but that wasn't wasn't going to show up too well against the uh, the blue. Yeah. So I had to go for that sharp edge sort of damage. I like it. But it worked out well. And there. Um, oh. So checking the chat, uh, Simon says, yes, now back to work, enough slacking, paint, paint, paint. Uh, Josh <laughs> says, I use cheap craft paint for basing work. It's not the most glamorous, but it's cheap and it's cheap and works quite well. Yes, I could totally see that being a thing and working working well. Uh, just says, looking mean, Simon says, very nice. Mushrooms look great too. The fun thing about the mushrooms is on all of the Gloom Spike Gits, they have like these purple mushrooms with the, the yellow dots we have some of these purple mushrooms and the red mushrooms. But he wanted to throw in um, a very bright lime green kind of thing. So the ball boys have some of these. I think each of them has one of the bright green mushrooms. Where did so you... Uh, a little bit different there. Were those all from like from the kits? Or no, did you get no. the mushrooms separately? I'll get it in a second. Leona, can you zoom back out for a sec? I think it's because it's. I gotta be super precise on it that, that I'm having trouble. Yep, there we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, no, these are all um, resin mushrooms. I think from Cromlech. Oh, okay. So um, just the third party kind of thing, but uh, no, he went through and he glued them all onto the bases and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, so. Lots of fun. They look great. And also I got to do this, uh, I think it's called a Weird Knob Shaman. Oh, I love that model. Yeah. Yep. It's oh, dude, great model. job too on the the smoke and the 
um, I don't know what that is, but out the green the, flame thing yeah. coming out of the skull. Yeah, yeah the skull there. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely fun to mess around with. I wasn't sure what color, how to sort of how I was going to do it all the way through, but some of the other smoke that I've done in this army, um, basically I I did it with a oh, <laughs> just frozen again. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Jeff. I was going to say some of the smoke that I've done with this army, uh, basically I just did it using um, zenithal priming, so it was primed black. Oh yeah, the whole thing, and then just hit it from an angle with um, with white. And uh, yeah, just the the gradation of the the spray paint particles. Made it, I'm sorry. To get, make it look you, like wait, smoke. wait. You're telling me you just did that with just like a rattle can? Yeah. Get out of here. Not the green, not the green in there, but yeah, the the white. But like and the, the smoke on the top, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, and that's then you just what, like there we go. Just like glazed into the green and called it a day. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. you can see that, that looks underneath. Fantastic. It's all black. From the top, it is all white. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it looks looks ace, dude. I mean, it is super simple, and otherwise, there'd be a lot of work, sort of glazing that gray and white over the top of it. But yeah, then just popping in the the green, that vibrant green. So again, that's a nice. That's the match to um, to the uh, mushrooms on the base, and because yeah, this guy great. just had he just had the round mushrooms, they got to be purple. But yeah, it's a lot of fun messing with that. Oh, Band of Badges is on, saying greetings from the UK. Greetings, Band of Badges. You guys must be Hello. up late. Although now, without because. Our daylight savings time has changed. Has clicked in. We're only four hours difference, so it is only coming up on one a.m. in the UK. So good to see you. Um, just as that's uh, that's a lot of painting. It must be an intimidating unit. Yes, they they definitely are. Um, I think uh, so. Twelve of those models is about six hundred points in the game. So they're like a third of an army for a tournament. Uh, I think I showed it a couple of weeks ago. I showed the Maw Crusher, which is the big orc on dragon kind of thing with the big fists and the arms. That's like f nearly 500 points for that. So definitely that uh, is a big, uh, crazy. Yeah, so that's like 1,100 points of an army in 13 models. Definitely intimidating stuff on the table. But, uh, yep. The whole band of badges says, yep, pesky time zones. 1 a.m. is harsh. Yes, I will be asleep at 1 a.m. our time zone. <laughs> but no, thank you for joining us. Looking cool. I think uh, it's mostly dry now. I don't want to make you watch paint dry. But you can see a slight shimmer under there. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer for that. Um, but yes, uh, ooh, there's one thing I should talk about. One of the things that we're going to start doing, Leona has had a great idea. We're going to have, um, I'll move that underneath now. Uh, we're going to have, add a new segment to the show called Hobby Hangout. Um, I know that we've, I think we've called some of our shows from home Hobby Hangouts before. But uh, essentially what Hobby Hangout is going to be is we're going to ask you to send photos of uh, you at your local gaming store. Ooh. Where you, uh, if, and if they have a, a hobby area where you, maybe you can sit down and do some painting, you can show us that. You can show us their vast selection of your favorite game, your favorite miniatures, um, their wonderful paint racks, their gaming area, if they have a gaming area. Um events going on, that kind of thing. But we want to see people in their uh, local hobby store environment because we think that would be pretty cool. It's going to say like those. your native habitat. Yep. Exactly. Or your... Uh, what's the thing that... I think uh, Rick used to use the term third place. So hmm. it's not the place you work, it's not the place you live, but it's your third place that you spend <laughs> a lot of time at. I kind of like that, that terminology. It is kind of funny. 
kind of goofy, but um, I do like it. So yeah, show us uh, some photos of your local store or a photo. Uh, and I think rather than showing like 10 or 20 or 30 each week, we'll just be showing one. We'll pick one each week. Exactly. To, to feature. So um, I think that would be very cool. Uh, on, on my notes here, it says take a selfie. <laughs> uh, but if you would prefer... Let me take a selfie. You can, um, wait. Why are we doing that now? I don't know. Can we? Oh, wait. I need to flip. I don't there know if this is going to work. Wow, this is very meta right now. What's that? It's very meta? Yeah, yep. it is. Totally. So just like that, take a selfie um, of you in your third place. Uh, I can't get and, the lighting to work. Oh, he says. Ah! There we go. Okay. Nice. Fantastic. <laughs> so now oh, that's never good. Good. That is never seeing the light of day. <laughs> no? Okay. No. Oh, my Lord. No. Mine's going straight up on Instagram. No, um, but yeah, uh, so do that. Um, send those in. If you don't want to take a selfie, have somebody take a photo of you at your local store. So just somewhere where we can see you and your local store and hobby fun activity so i think that'd be a super cool addition to the show um we are also going to be adding a segment called tip of the week and i think we're going to mess around with some pre-recorded stuff is that right leona yeah okay yeah so um that's that'll be uh basically where I, i sit here i come in before the show we film a little bit um or we film a little bit some it's sometime around the show uh, and then the following week, or in the following weeks, they'll be shown. Uh, so if you have some little um, tips or tricks that you're interested in learning, or if you have some that you can let us know and that I can replicate on video um, that we can show, uh, we will be doing that as well. So a bunch of fun stuff coming up. But how is it looking there, Jeff? It's yes. slow going. I am Lovely kind of experimenting. Uh, cool. Just uh, with some um, sort of blending. Do those ni- yeah. things nice and smooth. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how bright I want these. Okay. Sort of how bright I want everything to go. Yep. And then... The bottom, I'm not worrying about too much. I'm just trying to like set in some basic highlights because all this stuff is going to get glazed over with a green oh, okay. shade glaze thing anyway. Okay, um, so you're going to do it that way. You'll paint, kind of paint everything blue and then glaze with the green rather than yeah it through the to a green. Exactly, okay. and and the, the reason why not only is it faster. Um, but the reason why when you're doing this kind of scheme or the reason I really like to do it is because what I'm, what you'll find is when you get down to the lower parts of the armor and you do that, um, you can let, uh, like you do it in a couple of layers and maybe you get it heavier and green in some places and have, and lighter in others. And you let more or less of that blue show through and it gives okay. it that almost kind of like pearlescent kind of look to it. Okay. Which is, so it, ha- it has a variation to it. That's like a deliberate variation yeah. to it. So, yeah, let me see if I I think I've got a couple of the, the test models here. This is a good example. This is darker than these guys will end up being, but it's an example of kind of what the... Oh, okay. Sort of come on. So you yeah. can see how it gets down to the green there, but then if you look like you can still see the blue showing through on various yep. pieces of it. Um, it's kind of dark in here right now. This light's not helping me out that much, but turn this up a little. Hello. Maybe cool. This way. Yeah, this way. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Anyway. So. Cool. That's the idea. Okay. Now that's looking neat. Very nice. Yeah, it's just painstaking because, like, I'm trying to preserve as much of the base coat or the primer coat around it as possible, and I wasn't accounting for how long it was going to take to do the under bits. Right. That can be tough. You think if you're, um, it'd be a bit faster if you had, a, if you were going for like a darker cloak. Yeah, it absolutely would so have been. 
because you you wouldn't have been as worried about getting paint on the yep. that white. Right. Exactly. And in a long line of Jeff decisions that make things harder for him. This is <laughs> What, what I'm One hearing you them. saying is that the unit of five ranges is going to be sufficient for the army? And that will be all the army will have, yes. Right, yep. Because the rest of them, if you think about it too, without the without the need to go up to the white um, to the white cloaks and mess about with all that, I could uh, I could have just, you know, blasted this out with an airbrush and be done with it. Right, yep. But no. It's looking good, man. I think it'll cool. it'll turn out. Yeah. Excellent. I'm gonna pop the uh, I, just the black base room to go on the uh, Minotaur, but I'll pop him on the spinner there and check him out. Uh, he looks awesome. It was nice to do a little bit of celebrating with uh, painting with that coal black and. Uh, Mixing in some white to get that sort of the, tr the trim for that those petersias there. Yeah. Uh, oh, just quickly, Ashton says, "Oh, uh, is this a tip? I'm wondering if this is a tip." But uh, it's acrylic paint, uh, basically all the same. Can I use GW products with Tamiya ac acrylics? Um, in essence, they're the same because when um, acrylic paints dry. They become plastics, essentially, uh, or as they dry, they become plastics. The um, there will be differences in the medium, so the liquid that's carrying the pigment, uh, and I think Tamiya is one of the is one of the paints that is quite different. The medium for the yeah. Tamiya paint is quite different. They're thinner base, right? Like some kind of spirit base. Um, I don't think so. I don't know. Oh really? But um, I thought they were like maybe alcohol or something. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, but it is different to uh, so GW medium is very similar to the Army Painter to Vallejo to Scale seventy five to that Pro Acro all that kind of thing. Um, they're all in the similar sort of family of the way the medium works. To me, it sets outside of that, so you might find some struggle. To blend, like to mix the two, uh, but putting one over the top of the other, if the first layer is dried, shouldn't be. You shouldn't have an issue with that. So it should be okay. But yes, so there we go. That is uh, our Minotaur. Minotaur. How do you pronounce it, Jeff? Minotaur. Minotaur. Yeah, I was yep. talking about it the other week. Somebody, um, I heard somebody pronounce it Minotaur, and I thought, well, it's Minos. Is that was the island? So I don't know. Anyway, Minotaur it is. Uh, we'll go with that. Uh, so it yeah, that's right uh, the know. frameworks Minotaur. I'll pop up the other um, other way that you can build this particular frameworks mini. This is the one that uh, Leona built last week. Uh, looking cool with that double-handed axe and the different horns. But uh, yeah, definitely very cool. There it is. There, the box should be in your local game store. Uh, towards the end of this month, early April, or early April, for uh, $25. Definitely uh, well worth it. A lot of fun to work on. Great sculpt. And, uh, yep, looking good. Next week, uh, myself and Jeff will be at Adepticon. Uh, I might be dialing in for that. Uh, Gretchen will be back. Hooray! We're looking forward to having uh, Gretchen back. And uh, Leona will be here, as always. The great linchpin. <laughs> the wonderful human it cannot happen without. So uh, definitely looking forward to hopefully uh, sending you some videos from Adepticon next week. Uh, seeing what we can end up doing. Should be fun. Jeff is going to continue painting for the rest of the evening. Yes, for the, well, for the rest of my life at the pace that these guys are going. <laughs> well, I may have to you... skip Adepticon. No, that's not allowed. Uh, but uh, yeah, once you um, once you get that uh, camo cloak dialed in, you need to post some photos. Oh yeah, we'll post them the up on the groups for sure. Yeah, super cool. 
Nice. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Jeff. Uh, thanks very much thanks for, for having everybody me. in the chat for joining us. Um, we will uh, say good night and uh, see you all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye. Thanks. Bye.